Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Kadu by Upwind Games. This game plays two to four players. It takes roughly 45 minutes to play, or a little longer, depending on how crunchy you want to get. And it's ages about 13 and up. And in the game Kadu, you're going to be playing with your hero. You'll be using Shaw spells and spells from a card deck, placing heroes out, utilizing your energy for your spells and heroes, and rolling dice to attack either your opponent's heroes or the warriors out in the desert. Your objective is to score as many victory points as possible before you run out of energy. Every turn you're going to draw up to a hand of five. You're going to either play a hero if you don't have one or use those cards to attack with your hero. Or you can of course choose to use your cards to attack with the desert creatures against each other or against other players' heroes. After you've utilized all the cards that you want, as well as performing a special Shaw spells by discarding your energy, you're going to pass. And the next player will get a chance to go, drawing their five cards, utilizing them for heroes and playing cards, and so on and so forth. Once everyone's energy pool reaches zero, the player will finish that last turn there, and whoever has the most points in the game is the winner. It's pretty straightforward. Let's talk about setup, how to play, and of course, my review. Setting up the game could do is very straightforward. There are three different types of cards. You're going to have your Shaw spell deck and you're going to give one of each different card types to each player face up on their table. There's also going to be your main card deck which you'll be utilizing to draw new heroes and play spells utilizing your victory points. And then finally there are the desert tribes. You're going to formulate four decks with these tribes. You're going to start with the hero that has a 10 on the bottom right and then finish with the hero that has a 18 on the bottom right. And you should create four individual stacks within reach of all players. Then, after that, every single player is going to receive eight energy. This is what they're going to use to play heroes to cast their spells. And if they ever run out, that will trigger the end. All the rest is going to be dice, which you'll use to roll for combat, and uh, these are additional victory points that will be added to desert creatures whenever they defeat each other or whenever they defeat one of your heroes. Otherwise, make sure that the deck is shuffled with the rest of the main game cards and begin the game with any player you so choose. Playing the game is actually very simple. On your turn, you're going to have your five cards to begin, and you're going to choose one hero from your hand, discarding one singular energy and placing it face up on your board. The heroes range in values. Uh, there are three different types of values. One is how many cards you need to discard in order to attack. The other is going to be how many dice you can roll against your target. And the final is how much HP your hero has. So when other people, people roll dice against your hero, if they hit that target or above, your hero will perish. At the very top, there's going to be dashes on each end. If it's a one dash card, it's worth one point. If it's a two dash card, it's going to be worth two points. And there's only going to be one and two dash cards in the main game deck. Regardless though, you're going to go ahead and spend an energy, place that card out onto your field in front of your shaw spells, and discard this energy here. Place one victory point as an additional point on your hero, and then you're ready to begin the rest of your turn. You can attack. When you attack, you're going to be discarding cards from your hand, uh, based on whatever the cost of the card is. So in this example, I have four cards left. I, I use one as my hero and discard an energy, and I can discard two cards in order to attack. And I can attack any of the heroes on the field here that are in the desert or any uh, char characters that are available in my opponent's fields. I spend the cards by discarding them to the bottom of the main deck and then I'm going to roll dice based on that blue number. And I'm going to roll and target a hero. And this one here is a 10. I roll. If I hit over that or exactly on it, I'll defeat that hero, I'll discard him to the bottom of his or her game deck, or the bottom of the main game, um, the main desert area, and I'll gain victory points based on whatever the marks are on that card. Every player should have victory points, and I would suggest you take out a piece of paper, write down everybody's names, and then just add victory points as the game continues. You can keep attacking if you still have cards in your hand remaining left to attack with. You can also play card spells from your hand. In order to do so, there's a bottom marker and it'll tell you how many victory points you have to spend in order to utilize them. So you can't use them until you've actually accumulated victory points. And also, during your combat or other players' combats, you can spend your energy, which is also your lifeblood, to play your special Shaw spells. These are going to give other players minuses to their attack or minuses to the amount of die they can roll, as well as you bonuses to your attack and bonuses to your die roll. However, if you use these and spend your energy, you flip them face down. They're once per game abilities and once they're gone, they're gone. After you have chosen to play any heroes that you would like, if you don't have one already available, and attack as many times as you would like, utilizing either type of spell, 
then you're going to pass and the next player will begin their turn. And this will continue going around the board. And you'll always draw back up to five cards in your hand whenever it's the start of your turn. And you're always going to discard the main game cards back to the, disc the, the bottom of the main game deck. If you have a hero out, you can't get rid of it. It has to die in some way. And remember on your turn, you can attack not only with your creature against other people's creatures or the AI, but you can also have the AI attack other creatures or have them attack each other. And when they do so, they are going to give their points to the other creatures. So if I had a level one attack another level one and defeat that level one, that one is going to gain a bonus victory point and the other one is going to go to the bottom of that deck. And so they're never, there's always gonna be an infinite cycle of these guys popping up. There is a wide variety of spells that change the game's flow and give you unique abilities as well as unique characters that you can use as your own heroes from the desert deck, as well as ways to make your card costs less when you attack and some other fun things that are not just the main shaw spells in the game. Regardless though, that's the basic idea for the game, Kadu. Okay, my review. So Kadu is a tactical dice chucker. It's a game where you're trying to put out the best creature or hero that you can place out in front of you. That's your hero. You want them to have as much defense, as cheap to attack, and as many die as possible to attack, and thusly be able to defeat your opponents and keep him around as long as possible. It's also got some unique twists to it, utilizing the spells to keep your hero alive when you think your opponent is going to stomp you. And of course, utilizing the desert creatures to your advantage, whether it be to kill each other, to kill your opponents, or whether it be for your unit to kill theirs. Because the only way you're going to score points in the game is when you damage somebody else's creature and gain the victory points represented on that creature. And of course, if you swap creatures from the top of one of these stacks here and switch it to one of your characters, you can gain all the points associated with that creature as well. But otherwise, having other desert attack other creatures and other players isn't going to score you points unless, of course, you choose to attack your own creature with a desert creature, which is another way of doing things. This game has a wide variety of strategies, and uh, there's one that I personally love the most, which is searching through the deck and hopefully eventually finding a card that lets me swap a hero I have uh, to an exposed hero available in the desert. In order to do that correctly though, especially at the beginning of the game, I'll need to also search one of the stacks for the best creature and put it on top, and that can cost you victory points. In fact, every spell in the deck here, in the main deck, is going to cost you victory points. There's always a cost to magic in this game. Another thing about these spells is the Shaw spells. Now, your lifeblood are these uh, tokens here, these energy tokens. So you have eight of them to start, and once you're out, you're out. So do you want to use them to add more heroes in case yours die, or use these spells to keep the ones on the field that you have alive? And that's really going to be up to you. Now, like I said, this being a dice chucker, it is going to be swinging. You could roll all ones. If you watch our playthrough, you can see that I did that for most of the game at the beginning. Um, or you could roll a bunch of sixes. As you can see our playthrough, Alicia did that quite a bit throughout the game. <laughs> and, and so that is where it's going to come to uh, a head with the luck aspect in this game. For people who don't like dice chuckers, this is going to be a really swingy one and expect to experience that uh, win and loss ratio where you can over hit somebody or way, way under. You could think your hero is the best and go after something that's really weak and still lose and lose your hero, which is not the greatest feeling. But it's also a really good feeling when you've got a really weak creature and you destroy a really strong one that your opponent has. There's some strategies in the game that are going to involve you attacking your opponent's creatures, not because you want the victory points from them, but because you don't want them to have any more energy left. And so you're going to want them to spend their energy in order to play new heroes out and thusly have you remove them from the game by removing all of their energy. Uh, one small flaw in the game I think that this has is, uh, which I would house rule as well, uh, when you don't have a hero, you do not actually have to play one. You can in fact just have the creatures in the desert attack, you can pass, you can mulligan your hand, and you can keep it so that your energy stays. But I think that that can lend to kind of a constant loop of never attacking, letting everybody else waste their resources, and just utilizing the creatures in the desert to destroy everybody else until it's your time to shine. What I would say is maybe you can only have one turn after your creature is gone before you have have to play a creature out because otherwise it can be an infinite loop that players are not going to really enjoy as the game progresses and that player that chooses to hold out keeps all of their energy while everyone else is losing out. Now there's a little bit of a double-edged sword to that is basically what happens when you don't do that other players are going to score victory points because there's no way for you to score victory points with that hero out but it doesn't really matter if you can be the only person left in the game <laughs> and then at the end just push through with no big deal whatsoever. Uh, this game here has some 
some really cool spells. I like the combinations involved. I'd like to see a couple more different types of cards as well, maybe an expansion for the matter, to make it so that the big creatures that cost me five cards to play, I could find a way to at least attack with them twice. Certain cards in the deck will only really work with certain creatures based on the amount of cards that are able to be discarded from those creatures when attacking, and I would like it so that they kind of could function with all creatures. Uh, these shot spells are cool. They're, they're always really, really dangerous to use because do you really want to use that extra energy? And it's, it comes down to like, a, oh, it's, it, it, I'm not going to need to get a new creature with this thing. I'm going to have to spend the energy for this. And it might not even work, but when it does pay off, it pays off in folds. Uh, the artwork for this game is excellent. I really, really enjoy the artwork. Uh, every single time I had played out a new creature, it felt really good. The creatures look really good, and they feel like part of the game's uh, story. The game is like overall theme. Um, drawing the cards feels good and being able to choose new cards and find new spells and combinations works really well as well. Only one, one negative to drawing cards is sometimes if you have a creature that costs five cards to attack, you're simply drawing five cards and then putting those five cards on the bottom of the deck. I wish I could just skip that phase, but I don't really know if I'd want to based on the fact that it does change or rearrange the deck. It just seems like kind of like a little bit of a waste for the player whose turn it currently is. Another small thing that I'm not super fond of is uh, whenever you, uh, you switch a creature. So for instance, you play a spell that lets you switch your creature with another creature in the desert. You'll get all the point points on that specific creature. And that could net you a ton of points, especially if somebody has been building them up, which makes it so that that strategy of building a creature up to finally slay it, not so worthwhile. And removing strategy from a game is not my cup of tea. Um, so another house I'd probably make is if you did swap, those will stay on the creature. You can keep that big fat creature you have on the field, but whenever somebody attacks it, which will be very likely, they're going to get all those victory points for defeating it. I think that would work a little better in my opinion. But Overall, this is a strong tactical game with a bit of a dice chuck. You're going to be hoping and praying whenever you roll all at the same time as kind of manipulating your strategy throughout the game. The lifeblood feels good, and I like the game as long as it's going super fast. I don't want people to sit on their hands in this game. This game needs to be played quickly and um, with like tenacity. <laughs> so that's where this really shines. Overall, the card quality, and like I said, the artwork and style and design and theme work excellent. The rules are very easy to understand, at least in my opinion. There was a few little things that I had to kind of look and you can go on the website and it'll give you kind of an FAQ and like I think even a redo of the, the, the rules to make things a little easier. Um, the box cover, the box art is excellent as well. Really well done and made, um, put together. This one here, if you like dice chuckers, if you like tactical games, and if you like resource management, this is going to be a fun game. Now, don't get me wrong, it's pretty condensed and it's straightforward and each time you play it's going to be a very similar style of game with of course, of course different choices. There's not going to be like a lot of changes in gameplay mechanics as the game goes on, but you're going to have different creatures, play different strategies, and try different things out as you move on throughout this game. And overall, it was an exciting experience. Positives and negatives for sure. And if you like this game, go ahead and take out the link and check out the link in the description where you can go ahead and pick up Kadu, a solid dice chucker. Thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game Kadu. If you're interested, like I said, there's a link down below. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button, bell notification button as well. Our website, unfilteredgamer.com, has a bunch of stuff on it. Our Sunday night live streams, we stream games just like this one. And in fact, we did stream this one at 6.30 p.m. PST. And of course, if you would like, you can also go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on this channel. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to venturing into the world of Kadoo with you next time.